Hello everyone, welcome to Salesforce Atlas. My name is Darissa. If you're new to the channel, it is really great to see you back in the channel and I hope that you're doing well. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to integrate Salesforce with uh, Outlook. I'm going to start with Salesforce setup and in setup, you need to type in Outlook Outlook integration. And uh, with this example, I'm assuming that you already have an Outlook account and you can also use plugins. And uh, if you want to test it, you can also create a demo account uh, for 30 days without paying anything to see how it works. And um, then if you're doing it for your organization, for your company, then I'm sure it's going to be a paid package with Office 365 where you can add plugins. I tested before with an online free account. You can't really add any plugins. So this will only be suitable for paid accounts, paid Office 365 accounts. And here in the Outlook integration, I'm going to start with uh, moving this toggle, just switching on the toggle. And um, here you can see the guide. You can give users the integration in Outlook and decide as well who you want to select, how you're going to use your Outlook integration. You can give, give users the integration in Outlook, log email messages to Salesforce while composing. This is a real, really great thing. I will show this later once we have completed the integration. Um, this is on, so we will be using email to Salesforce and customize content content with App Builder. You can do this. Yes, we can also customize it perhaps a bit later, or we can quickly create a new pane. Um, something very simple just for, for this video. All right, it has loaded. You can see email application pane default view i have an email template you can create an email template and your sales users don't have to write an email from the beginning and from scratch each time they can simply select an email template your email template will merge fields account name contact name you can imagine you can do a lot with email templates and uh, i'm just going to save this it is just a an example just a sample pane i'm going to activate it We'll set it as default in this environment and activate it. Obviously, in your production org, it's different. You have to uh, think who's who can access the email application pane and um, whether you have to select it by profiles or by users, and then you can activate it. As this is a demo account, I can activate it for all, but usually you have to think about it a bit more carefully. <laughs> And uh, this should be done. So I'm going to go back it's right here. Then email application pane assignments by profile. I'm going to skip it for now and unless they want me to return to this page. But as it says, users see the default email application pane unless they're assigned to profiles with a different email application pane. I'm only using a single applica um, email application pane and I have assigned it as default to all users. Uh, that's why I'm just skipping, skipping this part and email application publisher layout. It says it lets users create accounts, cases, leads, opportunities, and custom objects directly from their email application. This is good. We are going to cover this later. You can create separate layouts for any user profiles you manage. Users see the default publisher layout option unless they're assigned to profiles. Right now we have, uh, well, we have a, an application pane. Let's, let's click and select publisher layout assignment. There is nothing assigned. I haven't selected anything. Uh, again, click the drop down arrow and scroll down let's click new and let's select salesforce atlas outlook and save it i have uh, this page layout with the um, with quick options with quick action options new event new task new contact so these are the things you can do within your Outlook application. We will see this later as well. You can see, we can also create a new account. Let's drop a new account and even a new group. But here at the very end, quick save. Again, drop down, go scroll down. So we have as well created a 
uh, email application panes and the publisher layout. You can use user mapping. Microsoft Outlook Web App Domain allow these. It is by default checked, allow access from any domain in this Salesforce managed list. And we are going to use outlook.com. That's going to be the app that I'm using. And you can also add a new option. There is a, a different domain and a lightning sync. Um, either we can use, there are two options, lightning sync or Einstein activity capture. I'm going to select Einstein activity capture for now. And I'm going to cover this in the in this episode. Here. I'm just going to agree with these terms. I'm going to select Microsoft Exchange. So you can also connect your Google G Suite, Microsoft Office 365, or Microsoft Exchange. I'm going to select the user level authentication and next. Salesforce Atlas Outlook plugin. You can write any description you want, then activate it, select next. Um, we want to see email activities. Imagine you're on the account or contacts page and uh, on the right hand side, you have your activities pane. You want to see the recent activities, recent emails sent and when it was sent, same as you have with uh, any tasks or events that are appearing and any any communication that you had with a specific account or a contact, the same we want to display our emails. I'll keep the events on and I'll keep the contacts. So both directions means that you can send from Microsoft Exchange to Salesforce and other way around from Salesforce to Microsoft Exchange. Uh, I can I can reply, I can create events in, in Salesforce and that can also sync with my calendar. It can help with meetings and it is the same with the uh, contacts. I can email them in Salesforce and this can also appear in my Outlook. We will revisit this later and the uh, email sent. So this is everything is about syncing with your account. The Outlook account I'm using is new. It's, uh, it's just a test account. I haven't got any email communication there. You can select the days. When users first connect their account to Salesforce, include emails sent within the last and the number of days. You can see if that's applicable for you. And if you wanted to, to go for this option and events as well, it is very similar. I haven't got any events in my Outlook uh, application or Outlook account. And I'm going to just skip this part. And uh, you can decide whether you want to sync private events sync event series, remove deleted events, and the relate synced events to Salesforce records has been selected by default. So I'll just keep it as it is for the purpose of the video, but you can go ahead and test all the options to see what is uh, more applicable for you. And the contacts, we can also add conditions, specify the conditions a contact must meet for it to sync. And uh, I haven't really looked into the conditioning but you can see here we have fields. Um, it's a good one. If they have, let's say, do not, do not contact them uh, via email, do not message them. Perhaps you can select do not message equals, equals false. You can select any other conditions or any other criteria. I'm just going to skip this. And the same contact, contact users following Chatter. So if you're actively using Chatter and you want to sync those contacts as well with your Outlook, then go ahead, check the box and your Chatter will be synced as well. And uh, when a contact matches multiple Salesforce contacts, sync it with the Salesforce contact that has the most recent activity, most recent update date, all this creation date, you can, I'll just go with the most recent activity and you can just select any of these three options, then select next. Now you can also return to the, either you can select your users by profiles. Uh, I have all these profiles here. You can select users. I'm just going to click next and then uh, customer domains. If you have any, you can add the excluded addresses. And also you can exclude any internal domains. 
and you can enter email addresses. They have Salesforce have created very uh, nice explanations for each section. How does it work with customer domains, internal domains, and email addresses? You can read more about that. And I'll click next. Set default activity sharing. And again, this is, as you know, activities appear like this on accounts. And you can decide if you want to share with everyone or you don't want to share. It depends on the on the levels of privacy uh, that you use as well on your org and um, how other users are interacting with your accounts. Perhaps I'll just select don't share and I'll keep it as it is. I'm going to be the only one testing this environment, so that doesn't really matter. But you can speak to other your colleagues and you can decide whether you want to share with everyone or you don't want to share and look at some examples of how other people's other users would see the interaction with the account. And I'll click next and then finish. Now, the instant activity capture is on. Here is the quick summary. And uh, at any stage, you can also you can also make some changes to your configuration. You can add another configuration. Let's say you want to add your Gmail suite as well. And then in settings, you can revisit everything you've selected. So if you hesitate with something in the very beginning, it is all right. You can go again and um, amend your settings and create a completely new configuration. And you can also add some excluded addresses if over, over some time you decide that you want to exclude uh, any specific customer domains. And here is the summary. Now, the next thing I will go and I'm just going to use my app. That's going to be right here. It's not a real email address. I'm just testing it. And you will see in here if you are in, let me just open everything. The, there are three dots. You can find Salesforce integration. I have already added this plugin, but for you to add the Salesforce plugin, you have to go into get add-ins and then start typing in Salesforce. And you will have an option here. Yes, let's say the very first one, Salesforce. I have already added it. You can see Salesforce have they have a lot of various add-ins. All right, 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 until here, Salesforce connector, Galaxy for Outlook, but the main focus here is on Salesforce. I've added it. And once you have added your add-in, it will appear in here in these three dots. I'm going to select Salesforce and I'm going to pin it so it doesn't disappear from my view. And uh, I have my login page open. I'm going to log in, log into Salesforce. I got my user details. Uh, you get to the page where you can either cancel or you can confirm your, um, your Outlook and Salesforce account integration or connection. I'm going to obviously connect it and it's going to appear in here. Now you will, you should have an option to create a new contact and also create a new account as I have, I have linked uh, one of the actions that was as well available earlier in the video. And uh, I'm going to close this page and get records into Salesforce. You will have a lot of information here as you integrate your Outlook with Salesforce, step-by-step -step guides on how to use this small pane. And I'm just going to click next. Log communications, you can log emails. It explains everything. And once you start using it, you'll get more confident. And also you will decide if you want to maybe change something about the pane. And uh, here I can see I can create new event, new task, new contact, opportunity lead within Outlook, which is really good. And uh, you can also have tasks. You can log an email. Now, if I select log email, you can select as well log email faster. Let's, let's select it and save it. Um, there would be some additional configuration for you to complete mapping fields. You can think about this as well, how you're going to store these records that you create in your Outlook, how you're going to store them in Salesforce, uh, similar to 
any cases or whatever you create outside of Salesforce and later push it into Salesforce, you'll have some blank fields. That's an extra level of configuration. But the setup is um, is right here. It is it is ready, and uh, I should be testing it. Now I would like to test it and uh, let's say create a new contact. Uh, you have an option of email templates. I haven't created any email templates, but this I was I was talking a little bit about it. If you have five different email templates that you're using to send out to your customers and save your time, you can create these email templates in Salesforce and uh, merge fields as well, and then select an email template and the text will pre-populate with your template. Uh, I'm not gonna cover this in the video, but let's just let's say, let's send this and create the new contact. Yes, I want to create a new contact and I want to use this email address. And I can even link to, all right, I'll be part of Berlin Textile Corp of America. Um, you can see already with an Outlook, you have uh, suggestions, account suggestions. You can type in any account if you are creating a new contact. And uh, I'll just save it. I'll save the contact. I'm also going to send this email. Send an email. That's ready. Let's go back to Salesforce and let's open accounts. And in accounts, I want to find Burlington textiles and then go to the related list and find contacts. All right, I have done something here with the page layout before. Don't really remember what was there. But I can see it is right here. There is uh, a Burlington Textiles and the phone number 1234 and the email address that I have just now created. Um, now if, I'm go, if I go into the send emails and I open this test, so there is, uh, I was just testing it a moment ago and I want to log email for the contact. I go into contacts and find Teresa. It's a bit confusing as I have two Teresa's here. I can uncheck it and I'm going to I'm going to log an email for the one that I have just a moment ago tested and I'm going to save it. And uh, I don't have a category. That is completely fine. In this video, we're not covering any field mappings. But right now, if I go and refresh the page, so that this test email should be uh, synced and linked to uh, to Dorissa from Burlington Textiles. Yes, you can see it is right here. And I was testing something earlier as well, but this is the one and I can see that it is related. They are connected in Salesforce and I can even reply and respond within Salesforce. And if I do this, then I have as well an email pane and uh, you can write a subject, you can add a template, you can add links as our email templates work in Salesforce. I'm going to cover this in the episode. So I hope that you found this video useful. You can see that the Outlook and Salesforce integration uh, has been successfully completed. I've sent as well a test email from Outlook and it appeared in Salesforce. I could link it with the just one checkbox. I would suggest testing it in the Salesforce sandbox environment before going live to see how what is appropriate more for your production org. And uh, thanks a lot for getting this far in the video please like share and subscribe to the to the channel and uh, like the video and i hope to see you next time again bye bye